In a very good news, Meta has announced second generation inference chip which is called as MTIA version 2. This chip is something to behold. Through the blog post or press release of Meta about this chip, it is full of very very valuable and insightful information and I will drop the link in video description. But in this video, I am going to give you a high level overview plus some of the in-depth technical features of this new chip. For me, the best thing is that there are more and more NVIDIA uh, competitors are coming in to the market, which is simply amazing. Now, this is in front of you is the next generation MTIA chip model. You can also drag it and play with it as you log into their screen, which is quite cool. As you can see, I'm doing it with my mouse at the moment. This inference uh, accelerator is part of Meta's broader full stack development program for custom domain specific silicon that addresses their unique workloads and systems. This new version of MTIA more than doubles the compute and memory bandwidth of their previous solution while maintaining their close tie in to their workloads. It is designed to efficiently serve the ranking and recommendation models that provide high quality recommendations to users. This is fab, uh, fabbed on TCMC's 5 nanometer process, by the way. It's fully programmable via the standard PyTorch stack driven via Triton for software kernels. This chip is literally an inference powerhouse and the software work is entirely driven by PyTorch team, making usability a first and it's been really great to see it in action on various meta workloads as mentioned by this press release. Now, going back to this chip, you can also see under the hood. There you go. So this is under the hood. And this chip's architecture is fundamentally focused on providing the right balance of compute, memory bandwidth, and memory capacity for serving ranking and recommendation models. In inference, we need to be able to provide relatively high utilization even when our batch sizes are relatively low. By focusing on providing outsized SRAM capacity relative to typical GPUs, we can provide high utilizations in cases where batch sizes are limited and provide enough compute when we experience large amounts of potential concurrent work. Now, if you look at its specification, that is also extremely interesting. And let me make it a bit bigger so that you will be able to see it much better. Let me walk you through. So the, as on the right hand side, you can see the next generation MTIA. So if you look here, so it is saying that it is using technology is TCMC 5 nanometer. So this chip is manufacturing, manufactured using this 5 nanometer processor technology, indicating advanced mini HRization and efficiency. Then the chip operates at a clock speed of 1.35 gigahertz representing the rate at which it can perform computations. Also instances, the chip consists of 2.35 billion logic gates and can perform 103 million floating point operations per second or flops, which is amazing. Area, the physical size of the chip is 25.6 millimeter by 16.4 millimeter, equating to a total area of 421 square millimeters the chip is packaged within the dimension of 50 millimeter by 40 millimeter which is quite common and then the chip operates at a voltage of 0.85 volts tdp is the thermal design power so thermal design power of the chip is 90 watts indicating the maximum amount of heat generated that needs to be dissipated under typical workloads host connection the chip can interface with the host system through 8 PCI Gen 5 lanes, each providing a transfer rate of 32 gigabytes per second. And then we have Gem Tops. Let me scroll up. So Gem um, Tops, this uh, the chip's capability for general matrix multiply. So Gem stands for general matrix multiply. So for this Gem Tops, in terms of teraflops, 
specifying different performance level for integer and floating point operations with or without sparsity. Now teraflop is trillion floating point operation per second keep in mind. And then we have SIMD tops which is the chip's single instruction multiple data processing capabilities in terms of teraflop. Highlighting performance level across various data types and precision like int 8, fp16, bf16 and fp32. And then we have memory capacity. For example, we have local memory in which each processing element has 384 kilobytes of local memory. On-chip memory is 256 megabyte on-chip memory. And then we have off-chip LPDDR5. So the chip supports up to 120 gigabytes of LPDDR5 external memory. And then as far as memory bandwidth is concerned, we have each um, PE can achieve bandwidth of 1 terabyte per second. Again, same thing for on-chip memory and rest of the stuff. So all in all, amazing sort of, I would say, innovation from Meta. Really very happy about their uh, innovation. And when it comes to the software, again, it is really good. For example, if you look at their software stack, so that is one of the key area for them, by the way. And they were the initial developers of PyTorch, which everyone is using every day if you are locally installing and running models, especially with hugging face transformers. And they really value programmability and developer efficiency. So, for example, if you have used their tool, I think you should already be aware of their innovation there. So you can see that they have divided into different layers like application layer, PyTorch, Dynamo, we scroll up, there you go. So now just as at a very quick level, so you can see that there are different runtime stacks there and MTIA streaming interface abstraction provides the basic and essential operation that both inference training software required to manage the device memory as well as run operators and execute compiled graphs on the device. And finally, the runtime interacts with the driver which sits in the user space. So you can see that a lot of innovation has happened. I haven't even touched the Triton side of things because then it will be quite uh, lengthy. So I'm not going to touch that area. But maybe you can already appreciate that um, chips like these not only from Meta, but also other manufacturer is going to really address the problem of scarcity of GPUs. Plus it is going to bring down their prices because these days everyone is struggling for GPUs. Even renting GPUs from public cloud provider is hard because of the limited capacity in every region. And I face it almost every day in my personal account. Anyway, let me know what do you think about this new chip by Meta? Please share it in the comments if you like the content. Please consider subscribing to the channel and if you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps. Thanks for watching.